Hello and welcome back to Nothing But Net, the NBA show that is dedicated to recapping the week just in case you miss something. Let's not waste any time, let's jump right into Monday. We start off Monday with a showdown between the Wizards and the Rockets, John Wall versus his ex-teammate Bradley Beal. In this battle, John Wall put a fight up against his ex-teammate with 29 points and 11 assists. Behind him was David Nwaba with 19 points and 11 rebounds. Jay Sean Tate also played 40 minutes and had an impressive stat line of 18, 6, and 4. Now John Wall and the Rockets put up an amazing fight, but it was not enough to take down Bradley Beal of the Wizards and his 37 point performance. I guess Russell Westbrook also had a nice game dropping 16 points, 13 rebounds, and 15 assists while he was out. He threw 18 points from Davis Bertans and 12 points from Raul Neto, and that leads to a 131 to 119 Wizards. Let's win. move on to the Bulls and the Pacers. Now, in this game, the Pacers played exceptional defense with a total of 14 blocks and holding Kobe White to only 16% from three. Now, they held Kobe White to very few amount of threes, but they did not shoot threes well themselves. They converted on nine of their 33 attempts attempts, but they did find other ways to get the ball in the basket. Zach Levine walked onto the court today, decided he was going to drop 30 points, and then hit a very clutch three late in the fourth. The Pacers later matched that three with a three of their own and sent the game into overtime. Sadly, when they got to overtime, the Pacers were outscored 15-7, to and the Bulls pulled out a win 120-112. to Now the Cavs and Warriors! Now this game was not very interesting because the Cavs kind of got blown out. The score was 98-129. to And Steph Curry contributed the most to that with 36 points of his own. And Steph Curry, do we expect him to do anything less than 30 six points. James, I noticed that you think you can see the reason I bring this game up specifically is because I want to talk about Andre Drummond. It came out last week that the Cavs were looking to trade Andre Drummond. They've been playing without Andre Drummond since February 12th, and they're trying to get rid of him before the trade deadline on March 25th. I do find it important to note that they also have lost every single game since they decided to sit and the two before. Maybe the Cavs just suck. And now we move on to the Nets versus the Kings. Why do none of these games sound exciting when I say that? Now, this game's not exciting because the winner should be obvious. I just said it's the Nets versus the Kings. Who do you think's going to win? It wasn't me. James Harden boasted a 29 point triple double and Kyrie Irving had a 40 bomb. It becomes more clear game after game that Kyrie Irving has taken on the shooting guard role all the way and James Harden has taken on the role as the point guard. Look at me. Sure. I'm the captain now. The Kings really did try their best. They had three players scoring 20 plus points. Those three players were Buddy Heald, Corey Joseph, and Hassan Whiteside. Now, Hassan Whiteside is only averaging nine points per game. Which makes game. the fact that he had 26 points, 16 rebounds, and five blocks in just 24 minutes of play that much more impressive. It was like the prime, I need to get my 2K rating up, but Son Whiteside was on the court. Tuesday. Now for this game, I want to pass it off to my buddy Noah Laco. And if you aren't familiar with Noah Laco, you should definitely subscribe to his YouTube and follow him on TikTok. His name on both is Noah Laco, so it, it, that, that's kind of cool. So take it away from here, Noah. Yo, you guys, now let's talk about that Timberwolves versus Pacers game. Now, obviously, I'm not crafty. You guys might know me, might not know me. From TikTok, I do funny NBA skits. Noah Laco on there. Go check that out. But let's go right into this game. Dive deep into it. First, looking at the Pacers, we got DeMontis Sabonis putting up a 30 point triple double with 36, 17, and 10. Sabonis flying under the radar this season. Heavily, heavily underrated. And I need to emphasize that heavily underrated this season. It's been crazy how much the spotlight has been taken off him. Wasn't really on him last season either, but he's improved drastically. His playmaking ability is insane. Now, let's go on to the next player. We got Malcolm Brogdon, another underrated player this season, dropping 32, 9, and 7. A near triple-double, but that's two Pacers players in 30 point margin. Pacers looking pretty good offensively with those two right now, but let's move on to the Timberwolves. Malik Beasley drops a nice 30 piece himself with 31, and then, you know, Cat doing his thing with 30 points and 10 rebounds. Cat is in his own category. He just passed, um, I think, the Timberwolves record for most threes in general in the whole franchise, so he leads the franchise in three-pointers, so congrats to Cat on that. But He's just doing his thing. He's had a pretty rough offseason in 2020 with a lot of stuff going on with him. So glad to see him back and doing his thing right there. And then we got Naz Reed. Let's talk a little bit about that. He dropped 18 points with nine rebounds to go with that. Not to mention three blocks. And this is the most important part. In 18 minutes. But now looking at Jeremy Lamb knocks, knocking down the three Pointer, the clutch three with 47 seconds left and putting them within two. And then Sabonis, 
hitting the free throws with 11 seconds left and the Pacers then outscored the Timberwolves 13 to 7 in overtime a complete shutdown and winning the game 134 128 a fantastic game we've had a lot of great overtime wins this year a lot of great overtime games closer games and a lot of upsets this season so you got to be expecting the unexpected there's a lot of great games a lot of crazy things that have happened 50 pieces back-to-back -back nights it's been insane but let's get right into this next game. That was literally the only interesting game from Tuesday. Now let's move on to Wednesday. We're already halfway through the week. This week was not very great for basketball, especially for me as a Mavericks fan. We pretty much got canceled because Texas is cold. We're going to start off with the Bulls versus the Pistons. Seriously, none of these games sound exciting. But Jeremy Grant, my pick to win most improved player, dropped a hot 43 points. Now one of the reasons I think he should win most improved player is this game right here. Now think with me on this for a second. His career high before the season was 29. He just dropped 43. Wednesday night was his sixth time beating his career high this season. Now, if that doesn't sound like most improved player to you, I don't know what does. And along with Jeremy Grant dropping an amazing 43 points, Sadiq Bey also walked out with 12 points and 7 rebounds. And in response to Jeremy Grant dropping 43, Zach Levine said, watch this, I'm going to drop 37. Not as good as Jeremy Grant's, but it's Zach Levine. He kind of does that regularly now. Now, one thing I find really amazing for this game is that both teams shot the exact same percentage from three. Not only did they shoot the exact same percentage, they took the same amount of shots and made the same amount of shots. Both teams were 8 for 28 from three. Now, with only 29 seconds left in the game, Patrick Williams, the rookie that no one thought should have been picked as early as he was. Hit a dagger three to put the Bulls up by five. After those 29 seconds, DeLon Wright was given a chance to get a game-tying shot to go in. And, and he did. Listen, I miss him on the Mavs, but hey, that's what happens when you leave the Mavericks. I mean, just, just look at Dennis Smith. The Bulls beat the Pistons 102 to 105, but shout out to Jeremy Grant. The Nuggets versus the Wizards. Now in this game, Bradley Beal had an off night. And Bradley Beal's standards of an off night is 25 points. To go along with his measly 25 points, he also shot one for five from deep tonight. Or that night. It's not tonight. But Davis Bertans made up for that with nine threes of his own with a 35-point career night. Now Nikola Jokic and Jamal Murray had something to say about that. Combining for 68 total points. One point away. With just eight seconds left, the Wizards were up by three points. With just two seconds of that left, Jamal Murray hits a deep three to tie up the game. It's looking good. It could go into overtime, right? The Wizards pass it in, and the Nuggets foul Bradley Beal with point one second left. Bradley Beal makes his free throws to win the game. That was the, one of the most terrible endings I've ever Thursday. seen. Thursday. There's only one game to talk about because, like I said, this was a very not interesting basketball But game. I'm still going to deliver this news. We're going to be talking about the Raptors and the Bucks game. And there's only one thing to talk about. That's how not interesting this week was. Remember last episode where I said that Norman Powell was horrendously underrated? He showed out again on Thursday, dropping 29 points, shooting 9 from 12 from the so field. why have y'all here? I'm just letting you know. It's not too late to hop on the Norman Powell hype train. But, hey, it's going to be too late soon. Friday. This is Yura Watanabe. Over the last three years, Years, Yuta has played 53 NBA games. That means 53 times he has walked onto an NBA court to play his organized basketball. But little did he know that Friday he would become a household name. How did he become a household name, you might ask Crafty the narrator? Because he showed off the best ball handling display that we have seen all year after he took Anthony Edwards' balls to his face. If you haven't seen the dunk, I'm, I'm gonna roll the clip. But if you have Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, Snapchat, TikTok, you've seen this. Timberwolves will take off a little bit of time here. Ooh, they were lucky that wasn't turned over. Anthony Edwards, that time he does finish with the exclamation point. Now, that was an amazing dunk, but to be 100% fair, Anthony Edwards did not have a good He night. shot 0 for 7 from 3, and 3 for 14 on the entire night with 7 points. But hey, I'm not taking away from the dunk of the year. That was great. So let's talk about the rest of the Timberwolves and Raptors game. It, there's not much to talk about. There was only one player in this entire game to score 20 plus points, and you know who it was? Norman Powell! The only player in this entire game to drop 20 plus points was my boy Norman Powell, who dropped 31. He said, forget 20 plus points, I'm dropping 30 plus. The Norman Powell hype train is now leaving the station. A chew, a chew. Now, let's move on to the Nuggets versus the Cavs. Uh, Andre Drummond still is not playing. Which, here's the thing. I'm really not a fan of this because me, my roommates, and our best friend are all going to see the Cavs play on the 23rd. I was personally getting really excited to watch Andre Drummond play live because he follows me on TikTok and I bought his jersey because of that. Also, I really like him. It's not the only reason I bought the jersey. You know what? Just for this, I'm wearing this the rest of the episode. I really love Andre Drummond and I'm sad that I'm not actually going to get to see him play now. Now, let me go over my history of disappointments in the NBA. My very first NBA game was the Cleveland 
versus the Mavericks, okay? LeBron, I was so excited to see LeBron. LeBron decided he was sitting an hour before I got there. Oh, what about my time I went to that Pacers and Mavericks game? Yeah, Luka was hurt. What about that time I went to the Celtics and Mavericks game? Oh yeah, Kyrie Irving was hurt. I just want to go to an NBA game and like get to see the player I went to go see. Anyway, the Cavs did get beat by 17. And the reason I bring up this game is not to cry about Andre Drummond not playing. I bring it up because Jamal Murray said, I'm gonna mess around and drop 50. He was eight for 10 from the three point line and 21 for 25 the entire game. Now a lot of people called his playoff run last year a fluke. This is the part of the show where I give a little bit of an opinion. I don't think we call that a fluke. I think he just has a playoff mode. For example, two seasons ago, he averaged 18 points per game, but he went and averaged 21 points in the playoffs. And we go to last season. He averaged 18 points per game again, but then turned it up to 26 points in the playoffs. Can we really blame someone for having a playoff mode? SATURDAY! Now we're only talking about one game for Saturday. Because literally, why else would we talk about any other game? This week sucks. We're gonna be talking about the Warriors versus the Hornets. Now before the game, Steph Curry announced that he wasn't feeling well and walked off the court. Obviously, I was one of the people who jumped to the worst conclusions and just thought the man had COVID, but apparently he's feeling good and now. with Curry out, someone had to fill in his shoes, and Kelly Oubre! Really, he really tried. He really did do his best. He had 25 points and shot 4 from 9 from 3, which is actually really good if you consider how he started the season off. But, like, that's that's just not Steph Curry. It's just not. And for the second week in the row, who are we talking about? Terry Rozier. Hi, how are you? This week, he dropped 36 points, which is almost a 40 bomb if you can't do math. With 9 seconds left, Terry Rozier hit a pair of free throws to tie the game at 100 to 100. And then with 1 second left, Terry Rozier has the ball. He takes a deep two, contested by the way, and he knocks it down. The Hornets beat the Warriors 102 to 100. Terry Rozier, is he underrated or is he just show up whenever I'm talking? And to go along with everything I just mentioned about Terry Rozier, he knocked down eight threes and was 12 for 19 from the field. And that was nothing but net. I want to give a quick shout out to Noah Leko for being a part of this episode. If you're not subscribed or followed to him, you really should be. I'm going to put it up somewhere on the screen, how you follow and subscribe to him. And if you're not subscribed to me, you should do that too. Thank you for watching Nothing But Net, the NBA show that is dedicated to recapping the week in case you missed anything. Thanks for watching, guys. Make sure you subscribe. I love you. God loves you. Have a fantastic day.